for Ukraine, it's a battle of survival. Uh, but for NATO, for mm. the rest of Europe, for the world, in fact, uh, it's bigger than that. It's, a, it's about those rules that were put in place in 1945 in order to create a more stable and prosperous and peaceful world. Uh, what President Putin has done is a direct frontal assault on those rules. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, the Russians will have to not have troops in currently Russian-occupied Ukraine. When that day comes, I don't know. There's many ways to get there. Uh, one of them, of course, is uh, through military means. Uh, and Ukraine is uh, conducting an offensive right now. It's a it's a offensive that's been going on now for about, uh, I guess, eight weeks or so. Yeah, something like uh, that. It's very bloody. It's slow. It's, it's long, very slow. high casualty producing uh, and very, very difficult. So the the idea of militarily kicking out two or three hundred thousand Russian troops is going to be, you know, very, very difficult and challenging. Uh, a different way of getting at it is through negotiations mm -hmm. and and maybe that'll happen too. So, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, no matter which way it is, through mm -hmm. diplomatic means or military, or military means, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, Ukraine must remain free, sovereign, independent with its territory intact. Yeah, you and that's winning. Yeah, you mentioned uh, generally the, the counter offense, the Ukrainian counter offense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said it's, it's slow. It is, yeah. It's sure. very slow. What do you think about that? Is it failing? No, I because wouldn't say it's failing. They, because they're, they're not achieving uh, significant advances yeah. uh, on the ground. Um, not exactly. The, the, um, they, they have actually liberated a considerable mm -hmm. portion of, of Russian-occupied Ukraine since the beginning of their, their offensive. Um, and specifically on the axis of advance that they're, uh, that they're attacking on right now, they've attacked through the first main defensive belt. This, this is a defense in depth that the Russians had many months to prepare. Uh, it's got minefields, it's got dragon's teeth, it's got tank ditches. Uh, it's a very, very uh, complex uh, set of uh, defensive preparations uh, that the Ukrainians are fighting through. And, and they're fighting through it. The Ukrainians have a significant amount of combat power remaining. Uh, this is not over yet. Um, so I think it's, uh, frankly, too early to say whether it succeeded or failed. It, it clearly has had partial success uh, to date. Uh, now, uh, the speed at which the offensive is uh, being undertaken is slower than the planners had thought. Uh, but that is not necessarily uncommon in the conduct of war. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the difference between war on paper and real war. And when real people die and real, real tanks and infantry fighting vehicles get blown up uh, and you're running into real dragon's teeth and real mines, things tend to slow down So, mm -hmm. uh, because real lives are at stake. So uh, the planners had thought in preparation for this that it would go a little bit quicker than it did. Uh, but it's not over yet. And it's, it's making steady progress. Uh, uh, you know, day to day, day in and day out. And it, it's measured in, you know, four or 500 meters a day, a thousand meters a day, that sort of thing. But it's steady progress and the Ukrainians are fighting that fight. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's bloody, it's long and it's slow. And we had predicted that several uh, months ago. Do you think you have been late uh, in providing the Ukrainian with a developed weapons? Yeah, there's a lot of commentary on that. And I would say so that, there's a lot of criticism, actually. Yeah, there's a lot of criticism and commentary on it. Um, I would say the Ukrainians have gotten what they've needed when they've needed it. So at the beginning of the war, when the uh, on 24 February, when the Russians invaded, the Russians were conducting offensive operations with combined arms maneuver, uh, which was fundamentally with tanks and infantry fighting vehicles. So what did they need at that point? Uh, what did the Ukrainians need? They needed anti-tank systems. Uh, so the world, uh, uh, um, you know, NATO, the United States, and others provided a significant amount of anti-tank systems, things like Javelin, AT-4s, and those sorts of weapon systems. Uh, and that was necessary for the time to defeat their anti-armor uh, capability. The other thing they needed was air defense capability in order to defeat the Russian Air Force. Uh, which in both cases, they successfully did that. Uh, the Russian Air Force has not uh, played a huge role in this war to date, uh, and the Russian uh, offensive armor and mech formations were defeated by anti-armor. Uh, then it shifts gears into the Ukrainians conducting an offensive operation. So what do they need to do that? They need infantry fighting vehicles and they need tanks. They need training. They need to learn how to do command and control of, uh, uh, of offensive formations in, in combined arms maneuver. They need to learn how to penetrate and breach mm -hmm. complex obstacles. Uh, so that started, I guess, probably six months ago uh, in, a, in a very intensified training program that was done mm -hmm. in various parts of Europe. Uh, so they got those weapon systems to do that. The two weapon systems I think that people talk about the most are eight TACMs uh, and, and, uh, and F-16s. F-16s. So they've been provided a lot of artillery, mm -hmm. which is you know, the bread and butter of, uh, of ground maneuver warfare, uh, is fires. So 
Uh, they've got a lot of artillery munitions. They've got a lot of artillery tubes. Uh, they've gotten long range artillery with the, uh, with the Gimlers. Uh, and, the, and the Brits have provided other types of capabilities that other countries have as well. So they've gotten a lot of artillery, but the Attackums is a, is a controversial topic. Uh, and for a lot of reasons, they haven't received those yet. Uh, they're still on the table. Uh, President Biden has not said no or yes uh, at this time. F-16s, uh, that is uh, moving forward, actually. So there's a training program in place, uh, and, and they'll likely to receive F-16s here in the not-too-distant future.